Hello, your devastator here, back with another video with general tips and recommendations for playing Demon Souls. Specifically, when you're going to wrap up your first playthrough and going to go into New Game Plus and beyond, as you probably should take some time to knock some things out and get some items and level some stuff up before making that first jump as going from your first playthrough to New Game Plus 1 is the biggest difficulty spike. Uh, in the game and you might be a little underprepared. So first things first start up here load up my main character here All right, let's go over here So we're in the spotlight Boop. all right, so Recommendations here uh, and why I'm making this video. So a lot of people it's the first experience to any kind of souls born game whether it's a demon souls dark Souls series uh, or Bloodborne, or Sekiro as well. And just a lot of things of people not knowing, generally speaking, what to do, what they should use, stuff like that. So I figured after being on New Game Plus 5, where I am currently, uh, the amount of times I put into this game, whether it's another character or my main character here, uh, platinum this game, platinum the original, figured the past month essentially playing this game, whether it was the original or remake, Probably good enough time to make a quick, hopefully only like 5 to 12 minutes video. Just tips and tricks of how to make your experience a little bit more smooth for you and not such a hard learning curve, which I know could be put off. So I know this is an introduction game for many people into this whole series. So pretty graphics kind of go only go so far until you're like, okay, I'm kind of over this game because I don't know what I'm doing. So with that said, when you load the game, and if you saw it for a second, I usually play offline. If you're going through or Platinum or even in general, while I, being online is more fun, I think, because you have the random interactions with other players, whether it's messages or seeing how people are dying on accident or dying period, uh, being invaded, invading yourself if you want to. It's easier to control the elements, if you will, if you just play offline. So if it's your first time playing, by all means, I would say play online for sure. But if you're like trying to get all your achievements, sorry, trophies, or anything like that and control your world tendencies, I would just play offline. I'm not going to go into world tendencies that much because that's that could be a whole other video, and I'm sure there's videos about that as well. So, but yeah, just, just know my recommendation is essentially that you always play the game unless you know you're going to summon a buddy at a boss fight play the game in soul form which you can see here you have a little white kind of glow off of your character and your life is reduced here so first things first play in soul form period now that way if you're playing online too you can't get invaded uh, bottom line so let's go here what I wanted to go over is just weapons. Generally speaking, the armor I always carry with me for these playthroughs. And then the items I would always carry. The type of ammo I would have with Stockpile Thomas. And the rings I would pretty much wear the entire time that I'm playing the game. Excuse me. So start with weapons. This is kind of like the list of weapons that I always one either had on my person if uh, you know equipment burden such item burden was available and or would eventually strive to get and use at the right time so starting with the crisp blade the crisp blade is very handy to have in your offhand when you're going to be throwing magic whether it's soul arrow uh, fireballs anything like that definitely recommend that just the, the extra kick of power to your magic now it does receive you do receive more damage but at this point, for this game specifically, it's more about, honestly, more a damage output race, more so than, like, I'm going to take damage in a trade-by-trade trade like it's original Final Fantasy VII. It's not really about turn base in this. It's about how quickly can I simply put destroy the enemy and just knock them out, period. So, recommend that. Uh, oh, before I go into other weapons and items and stuff... I'll post in the description for below for this video of where you can get all these weapons. So I'm not going to waste time explaining 
when and where you get the stuff. So I'll explain in the description of this video when and where you can get all this stuff. So I'd recommend that if you are a magic build, get the crisp blade, have it in your person. It weighs only a pound or one since this doesn't have kilos or anything else. Uh, I would recommend always carrying that weapon. Uh, on your first playthrough, you'll probably come across this weapon, the Dragon Longsword, as you can find this in uh, the Second World in 2-2. I definitely recommend... This is probably one of the strongest weapons you can find during your first playthrough that you'll naturally find. One of the earliest, too. And if you take the time to farm those big lava bugs while in Team 2-2, the same place, and get this to level 5... This will pretty much carry you your entire first playthrough. Now, for dragon weapons, it doesn't scale at all. As you can see here on the attribute bonus, it doesn't scale whatsoever. However, so many things in this game, besides obviously things that are fire element based, like Flame Lurker, the giant thing that's on a fire, right? So many things are weak to fire. There's so many, just a lot of enemies. So on your first playthrough, this weapon is very handy. And if you actually take the time to farm and max this weapon out, it'll help tremendously. Just having this weapon on your body will help you a lot on your first playthrough. After your first playthrough, not so much because, again, it doesn't scale, and you'll find some other weapons, which I'll go over a little bit in a second, that'll just do more damage, and so it's kind of irrelevant. But your first playthrough, having this will help a lot because all this stuff is weak to fire, so it helps a lot. Definitely recommend that one. The Blue Bullet Sword... You get this by mixing a boss soul into the broken sword. And the boss soul and the broken sword are both found in World 5, the Valley of Defilement, uh, the level 2. And the boss soul is from 5 for the final boss, the Archdemon of the World 5, Valley of Defilement. So with this one, I recommend it just because it's got attribute bonuses across three attributes rather than just two or just one. And it can be buffed. So you can use light weapon to make this extremely strong and it attacks very fast. And it just does a lot of damage for how quick and how light it weighs. So if you're going for trophies first, this might be a later weapon you get. Like I didn't get this until New Game Plus 4, I think. Just because I was worried about using uh, Mane Asraya's soul for getting miracles and spells before I was worried about getting this weapon. But it definitely helps in the later games and new game pluses to have this weapon and then use light weapon to buffer it even further. Uh, the Northern Regalia, uh, you get this uh, once you combine the Soul Brand and Dean Rant into one. This is helpful for a little bit, for sure, once you actually get this. But kind of like uh, the Fire Weapon, it has no attribute bonuses. The bonus on the side here is all tied to your character tendency, which is this right here. Your character tendency, right? So if it's not sparkly white gold with the white particles effects coming off of the eye like that, or a, the darked out eye with the red particle effects, aka you're not pure black or pure white, this bonus will not be its max available. So just be aware of that. Like, it's not 100%. So this is a helpful weapon to have. But again, once you kind of max other weapons and further new game pluses, it's not really necessary to keep it on you. But it looks cool. But yeah, not super necessary. Next one down that I would definitely recommend and definitely recommend that you use the colorless demon souls that you can get from the Primal Demons would be the Dragon Bone Smasher. Uh, just because I prefer this one just because of the range. I know technically for like say PvP the Meat Cleaver will be better uh, because of its rolling R1 attack and its AoE kind of effect. But purely for PvE speaking I prefer the Dragon Bone Smasher because this one has an innate ability to knock down nearly all humanoid enemies including red black phantoms. So that makes them so much more controllable and dictating that fight if you have this 
and you just time it when they stand up, and you just knock them down again with the same attack over and over and over again, just with R1, and just knocks them, keeps knocking them down. So, I recommend getting this from World 2, which you have to be in pure white character tendency, sorry, pure world tendency, uh, being pure white to get it. It's right there in the Dragon Gods um, boss room to the left. You can't miss it. You've probably seen it and didn't know how to get it, or you already have it. So I'd recommend maxing that out with the colors of Demon Souls, just because the scaling with your B helps a lot, and just having this weapon, while it weighs a ton, having a weapon on you that's just pure physical, it's not going to be tampered or anything with faith or with magic. That helps a lot, honestly, just to have that in your... Uh, in your kit bag, if you will. So I'd recommend getting that, and especially helps with eliminating the red, black phantoms that you need for some other stuff. So I recommend doing that. Uh, when it comes to either Moon or Crescent, I prefer Moon, uh, specifically for my build, because I am probably the definition of a quality build at this point. But I did initially start as mostly a magic and strength build. So almost like a paladin minus a not much reliance on the regen. Um, I go with Moon over Crescent because Moon has a higher uh, magic attribute bonus here, so it does more damage per swipe. But Moon does not have the magic regen as Crescent, but it's also weaker. And for Moon gain plus one through forward, more damage output is more desired than, say, just having this slow magic regen. Because you can get some items pretty easily and just, you know, consume them for spice and H spice. Just consume them to replenish and not worry about waiting for your stuff to regen. So I would go with Moon. I recommend having some sort of magic weapon on your person as well, whether it's Moon or Crescent. I just recommend Moon because it does more damage per strike. And the Uchikatana Moon is my recommendation specifically because this is the highest and fastest co combined attributes uh, damage output weapon that can carry you pretty far, to be honest. It can go pretty far just because of how quick it strikes, how fast your recovery is. It's fantastic. I definitely recommend the Moon Ujikatana if for your magic needs. But, by all means, if you want to use a Crescent, uh, the Crescent Falchion, found in the Shrine of Storms, that's fine too, but I just recommend the Moon because it's a little stronger. Uh, for your bows, I would recommend the Compound Longbow is what I use for all my playthroughs. I max it out here, as you can see, to plus 10. Uh, I really only use the bows legitimately to kill the Blue Dragon and the Baltaria Castle. Besides that, I don't really use bows. I don't use bows on normal enemies. I just, just don't mess with it. It's not that fast of a weapon in Demon Souls to regularly use it against smaller enemies. But by all means, if you want to play that way, I didn't play much of a dex build, so I didn't really mess with it. I never made uh, the lava bowl. bowl. <laughs> I never used a lava bow, and I didn't use the white bow either. I just never had a really reason to, and this one always did a job. Uh, for a catalyst, uh, I started as a royalty class, so I already had the silver catalyst. Um, eventually, I switched and got the Talisman of Beast in World 2 just so that I could do both miracles and my sorcery with one item so I, just, I can hold more stuff on my person, be equipped. Um, technically, it does a little bit less... Actually, it does not. I misspoke. Oh, I misspoke about the physical attack bar. So, either way, it's a better thing. Just use this. It can cast both things. I wouldn't worry about that. I never bothered getting the... Uh, it's called like the Insanity Talisman or Insanity Catalyst, I think it's what it's called, uh, that you get from making a boss soul into this, or into any, any catalyst, really. Um, I just never messed with it. I never had a need for it, because magic itself inherently in Demon Souls is so strong and overpowered. You don't really need it to be even stronger. You can if you really want to, but I just no, there's no real need to. So Talisman of Beast, recommend that. Uh... Talisman of God, if you don't have this yet. But, yeah. Uh, for shields, I would recommend uh, that you prioritize getting a shield that, a, a normal shield, that has physical damage reduction at 100%. 
and has a high, or you make it high, a high guard bar- guard break. Um, me, I just like the kite shield, so I leveled it up to 10, because I just like the design of it, and yeah. Um, you also want to have a magic resistant slash 100% reduction shield, so the dark silver shield that you get in World 5, being the final boss and beating Carl Vineyard, Vinland's. Uh, you can get this shield from there. Uh, it has physical and magic. Now, of note, this game separates magic and fire, right? So it's not like this is fired magic. It's literally like there is magic, and then there is the element of fire, like naturally occurring, like this thing is on fire. So not the same thing. All right, so make sure you don't make the mistake of like, oh, this enemy's casting fire magic at me. It's not what it's doing. So don't don't mistake that. Magic damage on this is more or less referring to, say, the magic arrows that the skeletons in World 4 shoot at you. Or that the False King a lot, his wind attacks and stuff, that's magic. Uh, so I recommend having something that has a high magic reduction, or like this one, for example, 100% so you don't take damage or chip damage as you get hit by it. The Adjudicator Shield, also in World 4. Awesome shield to have leveled up, also using Colorless Souls to 5 because then you regen uh, 8 HP I believe every 3 or 4 seconds or whatever it is or per second whatever it is I forget but it's a lot once it's maxed out so you can use this instead of using some of your herbs or, or crescent moon grass and grasses and stuff say herbs like Resident Evil I'd recommend this just as a backup to wear if you're going to two hands your weapons and then the large brushwood shield for, again, same kind of thing for the magic. This is your fire, so that you have 100% damage reduction from physical and 100% from fire damage. It weighs a little more, but I recommend that just so that, again, you're not taking chip damage if you are taking fireballs or fire shots from, um, say, the armored spire or front liquor. So that's the weapon stuff. Uh, armor... The only, generally speaking, recommendation I have for armor um, is to keep an eye out on weapons, or armor, sorry, and note the fact that the last line on every single thing will tell you if it gives you any bonuses or gives you any reductions to stuff, right? So the borrower armor, for example, boosts high fire defense. So the armor is very helpful against Flame Lurker, right? Because he's all about fire. Fluted Armor, for example, slightly, sorry, slows stamina regeneration. So just be mindful of that. It might look cool, which is a staple of the Soulsborne series of Fashion Souls, right? It looks cool. So, but just built for mind, this is more of an RPG stylish game where armor matters a little bit more. So, like wearing the full set of bar armor helps a lot against the same Flame Worker. Comparatively, if you have to roll around constantly, you might not want to run around and, uh, most so of the brushwood armor so that you not have this super slow region of stamina. So just be mindful of that. But also note some armor like this one has added benefit of increasing your resistance to poison, which helps you in world five. So I'd recommend having the black leather garb. I recommend keeping the bar armor so that you have it for world two. And I just like the look of fluid armor myself. Uh, same thing with the the leggings. Uh, I like the plated greaves because they're only slight sl- slight stamina radiation slow. Uh, and then again, bar boots, higher defense. Oops, back to one to one things. Um, when I'm going to be soul farming and stuff, I do switch. And I appreciate you can do this in this game. Switch the body type to a female rather than the male that I usually am, so that I can use the silver bracelets because there are type A, and this helps. Uh, boost the souls you earn from fallen foes. Note, if you try to have this equipped and you go switch to type B, body type, traditionally called male, it will screw up your item over here and like you can't equip anything in your left hand, so it kind of glitches it out until you de-equip the silver bracelets. So just be mindful of that. Don't try to cheat it because it won't work. Um, okay, let's go to rings. Uh, Already at 20 minutes. My bad. <laughs> so for rings, I would always always have the thief ring and the cling ring equipped on your character 
pretty much at all times. The only times I would say not to have those on is if you are going to be soul farming, which you use your ring of avarice to do that, or if you're falling down uh, the center column kind of area to the right in World 2 for the cat ring. Uh, besides that, I pretty much reward these two things at all times because usually you get the most trouble in Demon Souls is when you get kind of mobbed by enemies, aka you come into a group and then all of them become alerted to you and all rush you and just beat you to death. This will allow you to either A, sneak around them or take them out one by one. Your aggro just one, pull it away from the group, eliminate it, and then continue forward like that. Generally speaking, playing Demon Souls slower will help you stay alive and pretty much conquer anything the game throws at you. So those are the two ones, or the two rings, sorry, that I would recommend most of the times. Uh, for bows and bolts, I never use bolts ever. I just got that bow I showed you earlier. Uh, I used the rotten arrow and the holy arrow so that I could poison the blue dragon uh, in world two and then to speed it up, shoot it with holy arrows or just shoot it with magic myself. Besides that, I never use arrows as mentioned earlier, but those are the two arrow types I'd recommend. Uh, rotten arrows from the filthy woman in world five exclusively, got to buy it from her. And the holy arrows I bought from the grave robber salesman in world four. Uh, when it comes to healing items, uh, you kind of will always have, you'll come across a lava, right? Because they increase the drop rate of grasses in this game compared to the original. So pretty much at all times, I would have either full or some of the lower generation, regeneration uh, grass types on my person. Never be afraid to have as much grass, grass as possible that you can carry. Uh, just that never hurts the heal, right? Uh, for the poison and plague stuff, I'd only have this in my person when I'm in World 5. Besides that, I wouldn't worry about it. I just want to keep it. Uh, Fresh Spice, you can buy this from uh, the blacksmith right here in the Nexus for only 300 souls. Definitely worth the investment. Just have a bunch of this so that you can always cast uh, warding to keep you alive on the new game pluses and beyond. It'll help you in your first playthrough, but especially after New Game and beyond, it helps so much to have warding on that it warrants to me this 10 pounds worth worth of weight, or I say pounds again, 9.9 .9 of weight uh, going forward because it just helps tremendously. This bottom line, it just, it just helps so much. Um, so that's kind of the items of that stuff. Uh, when it comes to making your character and prioritizing, as you can see here, Again, I started with a royalty class. I took the ring as my burial gift slash starting gift, whatever Demon Souls calls it. Can't remember the top of my head. Um, it's pretty quality build, meaning that it's pretty much evenly spread out. Um, I would recommend getting up the attribute of magic, endurance, strength, and vitality. Uh, to high levels quicker before anything else, really. I, myself, on this playthrough, I didn't prioritize or use really much of anything dexterity heavy or requirement, nor found it super, super helpful. So, honestly, I could probably take my dex bound to 18. That'd be perfectly fine. Uh, same thing with faith. I could take it down to 20. That'd be perfectly fine. But there's no respecting... Um, of attributes in this game in the normal sense of I'll just go talk to the statue or something or go talk to this NPC to do it. That doesn't exist in this game. You can get your soul sucked away from you, technically, by a couple of different enemies or by evading someone and then you die by a physical, or sorry, a world hazard, aka you roll off a cliff, you'll lose a soul level and then you just level back up. But that takes off an attribute point from your highest attribute so it's not like targeted. It just takes off the highest one. At least it seems so. It might be from your highest of what you were naturally starting with, but I'm pretty sure it's from your highest. Um, so yeah, I would recommend putting points into Vitality, Intelligence to at least 18 before you go into New Game Plus 1 or anything. And I'll come back to that for a second. Uh, endurance, because I can inherent reasons of increases your stamina for you rolling around, your equipment burden, stuff like that. Uh, your strength, because strength's
pretty poor because you're gonna hit stuff, right? And then magic because magic is such a helpful thing across all across everything. So recommend that. Um, so kind of I was gonna go there. Yeah, here we go. Spells. So for spells, I would always recommend. Actually, probably I do not have all this character at the moment. I would always recommend that you have <clears throat> you buy the miracle. Uh, evacuate cause that way you don't have to spend or buy expensive arch stones uh, to get back to the nexus this is definitely a helpful miracle for sure I always always carry that um, typically I always maintain soul ray it might have a slightly less range but it's very strong and goes through multiple enemies so definitely recommend soul ray as well uh, I typically typically do use light weapon it's because you can buff um, the dragon sword, the blue blood sword, and it makes it very, very strong. So I almost always have that as well. Um, almost always have warding as well, because this will be key. Key to you beating and staying alive on New Game Plus anything. Like, this helps so much. I'd always recommend this. Another thing I'd always recommend, uh, again, this is a miracle is the anti-magic field because this will essentially render those octopus face assholes in world 2 essentially useless they cannot harm you whatsoever if they can't use magic so this you can literally turn it on or cast it and run up to those dudes and they can't do anything they have zero physical attack so you make them literally useless mobs so you can just kill them so i always recommend that one as well so the miracles I always use is the evacuate, so I can always leave for free, and then the anti-magic field. And then for spells-wise, or sorcery, uh, warding, light weapon, and soul ray. Currently I have, uh, this is spoiler, spoilers, in case you don't know what this is or how to get it. Spoilers. Okay, cool. So the soul sucker spell you get by beating the game once, and not killing the mating, simply walking away. You'll get this, then you can give that soul you get to uh, Uria, who is the witch that you rescue in World 3. Sorry, World 1-3. Um, she's the only one that can teach you this. So you need to free her, and then she'll give you this. When you actually kill something with the soul sucker, it doubles the amount of souls that you earned. So you can use that and do soul farming, which I have a link in the description here of what I'm talking about, to soul farm like crazy in New Game Plus, which is something I do recommend you do in your first New Game Plus and get lots of levels so that you have something. You won't be this close because I did this over the course of like two, three New Games runs, but it'll help a lot in just boosting up your ability to survive. So anyway... That's the stuff that I used. Uh, again, my biggest takeaway, I would say, is almost always have a thief ring equipped on you. That'll stop you from getting mobbed by enemies. Stay in ghost form so that you don't get invaded if you're playing offline. And it gives you more health. And because you're in ghost... Because you're in ghost soul form, use the cling ring so you have more health actually available to you. Um... Weapon-wise, try to always have something that does straight physical damage, like the Dragon Bone Smasher, something that does magic damage, like the Moon Uchikidana, and something that does fire damage for your first two playthroughs, like the Dragon Longsword. After your first two playthroughs, the fire weapon's kind of useless at that point, because more likely you'll already have a max magic and a max uh, physical damage outputter weapon type. So it won't really be necessary. So you can kind of put this back in your toolbox and honestly never touch it again. But I recommend that. Armor, just be aware of anything that has slowed stamina regen. So you don't make yourself super heavy. You also don't want to be, if you look to the kind of top right where it says equipment burning, keep it at 50% or lower so that you don't fat roll. Fat roll meaning uh, you weigh a ton and you can't... Do this kind of roll like this. That's their faster roll. And then you don't want to be your fat roll, which let me put all this stuff away. 
Oops, stick that away, put that away. That won't weigh enough to matter. Actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, breastfoot's fine. This might fat roll me, let me see. Alright, let's see here. Oops, wrong button. Yeah, there we go, fat roll. So over 57%, and then you have that fat roll. That's his fat roll. And more so in this game compared to, say, uh, other Dark Souls games or Dark Souls in general. Um, mobility is important in this game, almost to the point of where, similarly, in, say, Bloodborne, your mobility matters, even though in that game there's no actual um, equip burden, like you don't actually move slower, really, at all. But point being, inherently in that game, mobility is important, right? In this game, you can shortchange yourself and really reduce your mobility, which is not good at all. And it severely slows your stamina regen as you can see in the stamina bar up there. As it goes really slow, and if you were to take this off, regen's much faster. So, be mindful of that stuff. Don't, um, don't forget to be mindful of your equip burden and how much equipment you have on currently. Um, so that's really about it. Uh, the only thing I think of at the top of my head. There we go. Perfect. Perfect 5 0. And perfect 5 0 gives you perfect mobility. So if you're at 5 0, .0 you are good mobility wise. So. Back to the point. Um, that's about it, I think. That's the most important th parts, I feel, uh, gear-wise. Stay at 50% or lower, equip burden. It'd be good to go. Use a thief and cling ring. Um, if you're more really worried about invasions, just play offline. That way you don't worry about it. Um, Weapon-wise, we already kind of talked about. Uh, attributes, again, I'd prioritize putting points first to vitality, intelligence to 18 at least, so you can use uh, spells like warding and a soul arrow, or use soul sucker to do your soul farming in new game plus or higher. Uh, endurance, definitely get that up. Strength and magic. Me personally, I didn't really find a need ever for dexterity. So, and then same for faith, I got that to 24 to use the moonlight greatsword, but I never really used it because I never put more attribute points into it because I didn't need it. Um, luck I put up to there at the very, very, very end because I wanted to use the uh, which I put it away, uh, the Blue Blood Sword. But, yep, so that's about it. I uh, probably missed something in my 30 minutes of rambling, going over probably way too many details about weapons and items. Um, yeah, so if I missed something, please by all means uh, comment below. If you have any questions, by all means, you can also comment. I'll be happy to help and assist. Uh, definitely love the game, otherwise I wouldn't be recording this. So if you have any questions or comments, I please welcome them. Uh, if you need any blue, friendly, phantom assists, I also don't mind doing that either. Because uh, it's always fun. So uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And happy hunting, Slayer of Demons.